What'd you do this weekend? I basically spent the entire weekend with an eight, nine year week old puppy freaking out over fireworks. Is that, is that where you all the little scratches? Is that Actually, some of these do come from her. Yeah, uh, yeah she, she absolutely tore me to shreds. Uh, it was crazy. But I'm really happy we got a new puppy, so that's the awesome part. You guys will see it one of these days. So I went to uh, two uh, car events this weekend. Oh, yeah, two. Yeah, I went to Cars and Coffee here locally, uh, which was actually a lot of fun. A lot of people, you know, now that everybody's kind of past the COVID fear. Yeah. Uh, and then I did not know, but they do this cruise night in Golden, Colorado, which, yeah. dude, dude I, I, I had no clue. I've lived here since 97. It really is like Woodward. It's, yeah, it's, isn't it awesome? I've been there once, but that was like 15 years ago. You know, Woodward is the biggest cruise. You know, that happens in Detroit, obviously. Right. Uh, but this is like a miniature Woodward. It goes for like four hours. There's people sitting, you know, in um, on the street, you know, having picnics. A lot of American muscle. It's uh, like a full Americana moment right there in that one area. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And Old Tom, school. Tommy went with the uh, British uh, car club, our friend Ted. Uh, and we should tell you this, uh, you know, Tommy's been in the buying mood. So not only did he buy a new Wrangler, but he bought um, something that is out there right now and is uh, certainly interesting. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> it's nuts. Why don't you tell him, why don't you spill the beans and tell him what well, he bought? It, okay. Tommy who loves the French, yes, he bought, does. <laughs> bought a Peugeot wagon. Now, this isn't just a 65, a, a 65, which is super rare here in the States to even find one in one piece. I mean, I mean, some of the other later model ones in the 70s and the 80s you could find here from time to time. I have no idea how he found a running model here. A 404, uh, yeah. And it was funny because in Jalopnik, they just did a story on it being one of the most beautiful station wagons ever built. So if you want to see what it looks like, Head on over to Jalopnik. Yeah, you might want to look at theirs before you look at Tommy's. Yeah, but it was designed <laughs> by uh, Pinafanera, mm -hmm. the guy, same guy who did uh, the Ferraris of, the, of that era. Some of the lines are still there, and they really do look sharp. Well, um, you know, through the rust. Through the rust. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing. And then on top of that, the guy who sold it to Tommy, who was a friend of his, made sure that there are a few parts in the back of it. He came back. This is a station. Where it was loaded with parts, and we basically, Nathan, we spent the whole weekend here, like, sorting through parts. Some of them were so old, like, he has a bad taillight. I'm like, right. hey, you got four others. I opened the box, and it just crumbled in my hands, right? I mean, the parts were so old and, <laughs> it's Tommy. Uh, and, and crappy. But anyway, so Tommy's got a new uh, project vehicle that uh, he's going to, you know, be working on. I, I'm thrilled. It's actually really cool because Tommy's grown the Classics Channel, to be a pretty formidable little channel for really unusual old cars. And this thing really should be like the poster child for that uh, channel. Well, very TFL Classics. Of course, this is TFL Bids. Hey, Dan, welcome. Uh, Jason is here. Thank you, Jason, for joining. Uh, Doug, nice to see you. Uh, Lance, Bruce, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we will do another, uh, Dan wants to know, Goofy Drag Race. In fact, we're going tomorrow to do a Goofy, and this will be the goofiest one of them all because... Indeed. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I've got a special car I'm bringing to take on your leaf tomorrow. If it's your Tesla, I'm going to be really upset. It's not the Tesla. Thank you for not bringing the Tesla. <laughs> that wouldn't be Goofy. That would just be <laughs> humiliating. My I got to tell you, my daughter is so ticked off right now. She, she's overseas, so I'm, I've stole, you know, I've taken her car, borrowed, and, you know, putting it, putting her leaf on a track... Are you kidding me? And so she's really upset. She's like, what the hell are well, you doing? I think, I think if they watch TFL, they, they can guess what car I'll be drag racing you in the leaf. Tommy then, calls it the blueberry. I oh, call it the, okay. the jelly belly. So, uh, you know, we're going to have some surprises in there. But, yeah, we're doing that tomorrow. Uh, and we'll see which of those, uh, you know, is going to be the quickest. My leaf is surprisingly quick, yeah, like but, the wind. Yes, but blueberry is surprisingly <laughs> torquey, Nathan. Yeah, I, 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 I'm pretty sure we're good. Okay, we'll see what happens. All right, well, this is our TFL Bids show, and let's talk about what we've got going on over at TFL Bids today. And there's actually a lot going on. Yeah. Uh, so we've got three auctions. Uh, the one that's selling because the reserve is met is the 2001 GMC Sierra 2500 HD 4x4. That is actually Andre's neighbor. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, so that uh, got, uh, truck is up to twenty five. Sorry, $5,000. Uh, and it's going, it's old. You know, those uh, those trucks are very popular right now. They uh, uh, are big. They're very American. Yeah, and they're pretty decent project trucks, too, because, I mean, they're relati relatively simple. Yep, yep. And so um, Andre's neighbor came to us and wanted some help selling his uh, truck, and there it is. It's going to get sold. So congratulations, who's ever got the $5,000 bid. I don't know if it's going to go up any higher. There's 26 minutes left in the auction, so it might go a little bit higher. Yeah. Uh, the one that hasn't met its reserve is the 1995 Jeep Grand Cherokee CJ. Hmm. Uh, um, that is a local vehicle here. Uh, it's up to 2800 I think that the 
reserve is a little bit higher than that. Uh, and there's a little new reserve meter. So if you look at the listing, yeah, uh, there's a new reserve meter there. So you can see if it's actually getting close to the reserve. But right now, uh, this ZJ is not going to go uh, today, unfortunately. I like resale red. Uh, is missing a bumper, I noticed. Ah, so what? Better for... Uh, That's right, better for approach off angle. Yeah, yeah, I mean, come on, you're going to off-road with it, right? Uh, and then we have a new vehicle that just uh, got up on the site. It's a 1997 GMC Sierra K1500 Z71 SLE 4x4. That's right. Yeah, yeah, uh, $1,100. Well, so I, far, so far, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's got a ways to go. And that's got, you know, a full week left. So uh, if you're looking for, you know, any of these vehicles, you've got two, you can three, you can actually go bid on right now. So we'll watch that as we go um, throughout this show. Now, I did want to talk about uh, this really fun video that Tommy and Andre did where we took, uh, well, we took the spark, which we're calling the blueberry or sparky. I just gave the cat. Yeah, that's that's fine. You guys are running there. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we took it and we drove it as far as we could, and then we wanted to find out whether you know Andre's pride and joy, Nathan, his uh, F-150 hybrid can actually charge it. Now it's important to note that we did a very similar test with a electric motorcycle. What was that? That uh, that was the adventure bike, the Zero. The Zero adventure bike, and actually, you know, it's a pretty decent distance. And the guys at TFL Bike uh, took that vehicle, followed it with Andre's truck got to a point where it was basically crawling, stopped, loaded it onto the truck, and then charged it all the way back. Now, the big difference here is Andre towed a, what, 3,000 pound trailer following Tommy. And when Tommy ran up, pretty much out of juice, uh, then they had to load it onto the trailer, tow it back here while charging it. And that part of the video is really cool because it, the results were not quite what I expected. Yeah, so the motorcycle charged up completely, uh, or but, nearly completely, nearly yeah. completely, but the spark did not. So, unfortunately, uh, you know, it, it uses a little bit bigger battery and a little bit slower charger. Actually, I think it might be the same size battery, but a slower, lower charger. But it's cool that you can actually drive a pickup truck with a vehicle on the back, right? And charge it as you're going. And along. charge it as you go. Yeah, I got to thank uh, Matt Caldwell. He just gave us uh, five bucks, four ninety nine. Thank, thank you, Matt. Matt. Appreciate uh, it. He's got an interesting question. Viewers here since nineteen, uh, no, twenty ten. Yeah, not that long so ago. So 20, well, that's pretty much when we started. Yeah, and you just put in a reservation for a Ford Lightning. Ooh, very cool. I'm curious to which model you uh, put it in for. Yeah, let us know, Matt. Yeah. And his question is, any chance I will see uh, it based on Ford's current timeline? Thanks, great work. Ooh, that's a tough, so that's dude, a good one. And I bet you Zach behind the camera would probably agree with us that almost everything's being delayed, including the Bronco recently, yet again, because of the chips. Look, look I am, I am crossing my fingers, but Ford has three, not one, not two, but three big vehicles they have to deliver this year, right? First and foremost, the new Bronco, which they just, you know, came to a screeching halt on production. Yeah. Uh, I actually know the number, thanks to Zach. Did you know how many they delivered last month? 200? 801. 801. Yeah, 801 Broncos went out and then they stopped production. And the question that I'm asking myself is, how many of those were customer vehicles and how many of those were dealer vehicles? That's a really good question because dealers get these things they call like mannequins or whatever, where they send them out there and those you can't are the, sell them. They're just they're like just they have to sit on the lot. Yep. And I know that Ford recently gave them permission with other vehicles to sell those vehicles from time to time, but there are certain conditions that have to be met. The thing is. What is st astonishing is that, first of all, the Bronco is outselling the Ford Ranger right now, which is nuts. People really want it. So, what, I mean, the question is, would you be able to take the chip that you would have to put in or chips into the Ranger and put it into the Bronco because they're so similar? And if so, why not do that? So you can, I'm, sure I, I'm just, I'm, I'm curious. I'm sure they're playing chip roulette at all the auto manufacturers. But so the Ford Bronco, right, that's out now and just yep. stopped production. Then we've got, of course, the uh, new small truck, Nathan. Oh, the yeah. The Maverick, right? The Maverick. That's, and then, of course, we have I'm the Lightning. I'm dying to see that. So, I mean, Ford's got a lot on their plate. So you have to deliver three very unique and very brand new, right? And, and we, we talk about this like it's no big deal, right? But when you have to actually build out a factory, whether from scratch or... You know, retool it. Retool it. It's a huge deal. And we know it's a huge deal because Tesla is having a hell of a time doing it. Right. Lucid is having a hell of a time doing it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, you know, t t I think people don't understand like how easy it is to build a prototype. Right. Yeah. Uh, like, like, but then to take that and actually build it into the, all the stampings and everything oh else. My and you gosh, have to yeah. hire people and those people need to have all these benefits and you have to have a place for them to live. You have a place for their kids to go to school. There's a whole ecosystem that goes around a factory, especially a new one 
or if you're adding to your factory, you have to have people build that and add to it. There is a ton of stuff that's required in order to make these things happen. And people don't see that on the other end, the customers. And that's what I know is so frustrating for these automakers. Well, that and no chips. So Chris Deal says, I love all your videos. I've thank you. not missed one episode of any channels for the past five years. So wow, thank you. Thank wow, you. thank you guys. And by the way, uh, I've got this crazy idea. Yeah. Um, so I want to I want to develop an app, because right now, let's face it, we've got a lot going on, Nathan. We've got yeah, like, seven same. YouTube channels, four uh, websites, two podcasts. Yeah. Uh, you know, a TikTok channel. So what I'd love to do is create an app, right, that has like three categories. News, which would take the RSS feed and put in all of our uh, websites. Uh, videos, which would take the seven feeds from all and then put in all of the uh, uh, videos. I'm liking this, And then yeah. podcasts. So if you got the app, uh, you would be able to, you know, have one place where you can get all the news, all the videos, and all the podcasts. Right there, you just click on which one you want, yeah, and exactly. boom, you get all, everything that's that's been updated. Yeah. So if you guys, the, the thing is, I need a, we need we need a uh, app developer. So if you know of any good app developers, we'd love to get uh, some. That's a hell of a good recommendation. Idea. Yeah, we're looking for you know somebody who knows how to build this out, and then the other thing, somebody who knows how to get it into the app stores as well, both Android and Apple. Yeah. And, and, and maybe not too expensive. <laughs> anyway, let us know. Ask a <laughs> TFL truck. Uh, give us give us a, uh, a heads up on any app developers that you have worked with that uh, would be uh, good that we could do, do. Anyway, let's keep going. Yes, please. Um, so, um, what did you just do? We, so, well, <laughs> let me do the background, okay? Yes, please, okay. All right, so, uh, I'll give you this. This is the first time we're talking about it, uh, and, and it might spoil uh, the, the surprise for some of you hardcore viewers, but I think it's worth it because we like to get your input, so. You guys are on the inside. You're, you're on the inside, so we kind of use you, and then I read the comments, and I kind of look and see, you know, whether you think it's a good idea or not. But as you know, we recently concluded a new series that we did called uh, To Hell and Back, No Payment Needed. Right. Where I uh, basically gave the boys, or the company gave the boys $5,000 to go buy three trucks. Uh, as it turned out, it was a Ford, a Ram, or a Dodge, and a Chevy, and then we took them to, um, Moab ran Hell's Revenge and then brought him back here. And, and pins and things, by the way. And, and pins and things, yeah. So we did actually both of those. Uh, so it was very successful. I think the videos were viewed you know, millions of times. And so we thought, you know what? Let's take it to the next level, right? Let's go and make it much, much harder and see if we can accomplish the same thing. So we've come up with a new series basically uh, called For a Few Bucks Less. And why is it For a Few Bucks Less, Nathan? Because basically... To hell and uh, back. To, 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 well, it's sort of... You know, our, our budget's been cut in half. Exactly. So, so, so it's 2,500 bucks. So now instead but, of 5,000. Right. Which is, which is right about the point where you can almost buy a working vehicle on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Almost. And right now, as many of you guys know, used car values or the pricing is going through the roof. People are just being you know, really unrealistic. So cars that would be worth, let's say, 2,500 bucks six months ago, are now 35 and even 4,500 bucks now. And I, I keep an eye on these things. I like cheap cars and man, prices are just outrageous. So today we're going to spill the beans on one of the vehicles that we bought. Only one, because you know, there are three of them that were bought, but That's only, only one of them. And uh, let me tell you what we're going to do with them, okay? So it's, it's actually harder than the last one. We're going to take these three vehicles and we're going to drive them all the way to Telluride, which is across a very steep pass on road. Yep. That's going to take a day because it's about eight hours from here to Telluride. So for $2,500, it's got to you know, go up to about 12,000 feet, up a very tight pass. And then we're going to take it on the most classic, the most beautiful, the most challenging pass in Colorado, not Black Bear. That's too dangerous. I don't want to Yeah, anybody. Black Bear won't work on But these. Imogene. Imogene's beautiful. Yeah, so we're going to take it on Imogene. And it's still pretty challenging. Yeah, and then, then, right, we're going to go off-road back to Moab and do Hell's Revenge. So on-road... Imogene, Off-Road, and Hell's Revenge, all for $2,500, and uh, see how that uh, turns out. So we just got back from our master mechanic, Toby, over at German Auto here in Boulder. Plug, 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 he's a great guy. He's uh, a great guy. And Nathan, tell him about your process of getting your vehicle. Tell him, tell him. so I, I basically sure. came into the office last week and gave 
Nathan, Tommy, and Andre, $2,500 in cash. There's yeah, and we wanted to take Tommy to Vegas, yeah. but, but Roman said no. No, yeah, and, and by the way, you got to do cash at $2,500. No one's taking a check at $2,500. Nobody, nobody no, not, not really. <laughs> so, so he gave us basically envelopes filled with cash. This is all films and everything else. You guys will see it. Yeah, we're editing that video. Now, do, do I tell them what I bought? Or yeah, tell, tell, I give tell them your process and tell them what you ended up buying. Because and then tell really, them what, what Toby said about the vehicle that you bought. It's what's really, kind of, uh, I want to give this preface. So right. the whole thing is that um, I've actually shown the vehicle on Twitter on my own account yep. and it bounced around on TFL car and a lot of people assume I bought the other car okay. they can say which one I bought right. right so here's the thing the cat's out of the bag I bought a 1996 Chevrolet Blazer the <laughs> S10 how many miles 244,000 miles <laughs> give or take uh, a little bit more than that and um, it, it's got good and bad and I'm not going to give away everything that's good and bad but one thing I really liked about it is that it's a short wheelbase I was looking for the the um, Z71 uh, version. Right, sure. As one ZR2, would. sorry. As one, ZR2 as version. one's going to go over a oh. very tough mountain pass. Yeah, because that has the big axles and, and, and the skid plates and the lift and everything else. It's a really awesome off-roader. I've driven one before. This is not that. This is sort of the base model, but it still is four-wheel drive. It's the short wheelbase two-door. I think it looks like a million bucks. It looks great. Super it's resale red. It's resale red. Everything works, pretty yeah. much. No, well, everything uh, works. Does the air conditioner work? Yes. Just really, really Whoa. slow. Tommy's laughing off camera. Uh, it does work. It's just very, very weak. Um, and it doesn't blow right. Here. But it works. Um, there's it, a big oil stain on the driveway where yeah, it was there's, parked. There's, it is leaking a little bit of a lot of oil. So that, that is when it, but we won't go into all the issues. So here's the thing. Everybody online thought I bought the other vehicle. Not could give away who bought what other than what my, mine is unless you want me to. But there- yeah, We'll do the next show. Yeah, we'll, there's we'll a Mazda, the which is basically a Ford Ranger. And a lot of people thought I bought that. No, we just gave really it away. Funny. Huh? We just gave it away. No, no, no. It's, it's already out there on the internet. All right. Well, we're, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, but we're I'm not saying who these guys. It. All right. All right. That's yeah. fine. I'll say this. Someone's Stop. vehicle is so bad, Toby said it was so dangerous to drive on the road, he wouldn't let me leave with it. Wow. Some vehicle, one of the vehicles is so dangerous that Toby said they would not allow him to drive it on the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know it's not yours. It's not mine. Because you drove yours back. I drove Toby. mine back. Yeah. Well, I actually bought one of those giant things of oil. So um, the, the big thing about this series, which is really going to be cool, is the fact that we are going to make them a little bit safer. But the real thing is that for $2,500 or less, or slightly more in some cases, we're basically taking these vehicles and doing some pretty hard off-roading with them long distance driving in the middle of summer at high altitude. A lot of that is going to be a lot of work for these trucks. And I'm thinking that it's going to be an interesting series. There may, they, we may not make it. So I'm, I'm uh, to make it even more fun, I am bringing the old Ford that I bought for the previous series, the, <laughs> F, right. the F-150, you know, the one with the, the long bed. And, and the, the giant eagle yeah, on the hood. So that, that's going to that's gonna be the truck that these guys get when, well, when they break down. So that, that's going to be like the booby truck. But uh, as I'm thinking about it, I think it's more of an upgrade. Are than you a kidding downgrade. me? I, I think <laughs> that new air conditioner works really good. So you're going to see like, you know, some of us like deliberately neutral dropping or doing whatever to get to it. Uh, the thing is, is that uh, this this I will be a very different through. series. Yeah. Uh, the th the really cool part about this series is that you know we really did take a major step down in terms of our budget, and there are a lot of you guys out there who are thinking about doing a cheap budget truck. So some of these might make a good budget truck in terms of you know in the back of your mind. So keep that in mind when you see us beating these things mercilessly off road. Yeah, yeah. So we just finished filming episode two where we took him to Toby. And like, like Tommy said, he just came back from Toby's <laughs> and apparently one of them is still at Toby's because it's too, uh, uh, it's it's too, awesome. too unsafe. And that True. means that it's either Andre's or Tommy's. Yeah. One of the two. Oh, we, we, they don't even know that. So Andre and Tommy are actually with me doing the off-roading and Roman is sort of the master of everything. Ceremonies. The, I'm in the, the truck. The puppet master. Until, until, until you know, <laughs> one of the cars breaks down. Yep. And then, then they're in the truck. <sighs> All right. Well, let's take a back, let's take a pick back at the uh, uh, site and see what's going yeah, on. Yeah, let's have what, a look there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna. So, really what do you guys think of my browser. choice, huh? Yeah, let us know what you think of Nathan's I, I choice. I really, I, well, I used to own a 1992 GMC Jimmy, and I absolutely 1991. Sorry, with a 350 V8, five speed, technically four speed with a Granny gear, Saginaw transmission. I loved that thing. Um, it's out there on the internet too. There's a picture of me with it. I loved that truck. There has been some action, Nathan. Oh, cool! What yeah, the ZJ, the '95 Grand Cherokee ZJ, has gone up to thirty-one hundred dollars. Oh! So we are getting close to actually hitting its reserve. Um, so you know, the the, I wonder uh, if the Sierra 2500 is still five thousand, and of course the GMC uh, K 
1500 is still uh, 1100 but the ZJ has gone up, so cool. All right, let me read some comments and see what people are saying, okay? Um, so let's see here. I'm excited to see the S10 Blazer. Yeah, you know what's interesting? They don't call it the, the so after the regular S10 Blazer, when this one came out, which was I think 95, 96, they dropped the S10 moniker, right? And they just called it the Blazer. And then later on, the big Blazer, they got rid of that name, called it the Tahoe, you know, all that other stuff changed. And then they got rid of Blazer altogether and called everything Frail Blazer. Unusual. Cage I wish, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Cage wants to know, does the F-150 still smell like a bag? Gym no, bag? It, yeah. I, I just wrote in it yeah. recently. We actually drove all over. So the, the, buy, oops, sorry. the buying process of these vehicles is also out there. And you're going to see me in that truck going to other people trying to buy other vehicles. The Blazer wasn't my first choice. And we rode, Alex and I drove that thing like 150 miles. And it smelled fine. The air conditioner worked great. It's just, it's a little stiff. It's a little stiff. <laughs> when it rides, it's a little stiff. It's a little stiff, yeah. Every time you, you uh, lift a vehicle, you kind of make a good for off-road, but the not The tires and the wheels and everything. Yeah. It's fine. It's just that, yeah. <laughs> All right. Lego Mayago says the Bronco will be selling over MSRP. Will be. It is, dude. It's up to, I've seen dealers selling it over 30K over Oh, sticker. people are flipping them already. 30K over sticker already. It's just, it's ridiculous. And it's a shame because a lot of people out there with hard-earned money can't afford a vehicle I, I just, of their dreams. Nathan, I just can't get my head around, like, who's got an extra 30K just lying around that, you know, the, the, basically the cost of an Accord. A nice Accord. <laughs> or, yeah. You know, or even a base Wrangler. Just, uh, just, you know, just, the, to say, uh, just to say you're the first. I don't understand that mentality. It, there are uh, so many people who do that, though. There's so much money in this Remember world, Remember the Gladiator? Yeah. People were stupid with that one. The amount of money they threw at that first generation white thing, the uh, whatever they called it, and... <laughs> They couldn't even get it. Remember, everybody was throwing their money at the first generation, whatever that was called, Zach. The, um, the first edition. First edition, okay. Yeah. And ironically, that sat on the line while people who just walked into the dealership were able to get these other ones off the dealership until the. So all these guys who spent extra money to get these early well, ones didn't get them. So the first edition wasn't. I mean, it wasn't overpriced. But now we're talking about people like or dealers, you know, getting twenty to thirty k. I mean, I get why dealers do it, because they're really the customer, right? The yeah. Dealer, the dealer's a customer because he's buying the vehicle or she's buying the vehicle from the manufacturer and we're buying it from the dealer. But still, I don't get the people who'd be like, yeah, I'll go pay 30K over to be the first. I guess that's important. I guess if you got a lot of money, it's, it's... I say you remember the name of that dealership because in the future, don't do business with them. Seriously, I, I, I think that they're unscrupulous by doing that. And there's a better way to serve your customer, and so, that's not by screwing So here, here's a great question. When will TFL test the Santa Cruz? I'm actually mm. going on the program very soon, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to go drive it. Uh, I think we're going up to uh, Santa Barbara. No, 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 not Santa Barbara, uh, Sonoma. So up, Sonoma. up north of San Francisco, and then we're working with uh, actually Hyundai to get a long-term one-year one for review. So as you know, we tend, if we can, we tend to buy vehicles uh, for a year, we tend to buy the most exciting and interesting ones, and they're the most expensive ones. But with Hyundai, we might actually work something where they would give us one for a year to actually have and test. Uh, and Which would be outstanding. Which would I'm, be outstanding, yeah. Well, what's, you know what's really cool is that, what, 2005? or two, No, no, just 2015. Roman and I were there at the Detroit Auto Show when they unveiled the prototype or the uh, yeah, concept. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. And what was cool is that we got some inside information that this wasn't some SUV, it was going to be a truck. And we freaked out. We got there. We actually got the good footage still out there. And it's cool to see something move from this concept that a lot of people were excited about to an actual production vehicle that hopefully we're going to get our hands on very soon. So, yeah. So first first drive and then after the first drive, you know, those are manufactured here in America, the Santa Cruz's. Yeah. Uh, and so it would be great to have one. And, of course, you'd love to compare it against the Maverick, right? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's exciting times for small trucks uh speaking of small truck captain uh, Ramu ramus says or R remus says when is your rivian arriving we do not have a rivian uh ordered uh you know a lot of people have ordered them it was twenty five hundred dollars to put a reservation down that's a lot of dough that's a lot of dough uh and you tesla's know, charging 100 bucks yeah which used to be refundable now they stop my neighbor's yeah. like get this dude love my neighbor he's a huge car guy but he's like reserved and walked away from the plaid three times now so he's like lost three hundred dollars well, what did, okay. He reserves it, then he like changes his mind, and he says, no, I don't want it. And then so he's just giving them 300 bucks. Yeah, pretty much. Might as well just it, cut a check and hand them the That's the way you make money, yeah. Yeah. On the <laughs> plaid. Uh, so, you know, uh, we, we, we actually had a meeting. We, we have a reservation uh, on nothing. 
<laughs> no Cybertruck, no Bronco, uh, just kind of not what we do. Uh, but because of you guys and because of the, you know, if you combine all of our channels, it's something like 30 million people a month watch our videos. Uh, that's just on YouTube, forget about all the other places we you know, post stuff. But uh, so you know, the invitation is open to you, Rivian, or, Cyber, or Tesla, or Ford, or whoever. If you want to uh, you know, give us a sh chance at buying the vehicle uh, at MSRP and let us review it for a year, we will do that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and you will get, obviously, a lot of uh, honest and uh, thorough and thoughtful reviews. Uh, because you're going to get, uh, you know, some of that uh, on YouTube, but a lot of that, I've been watching, uh, we and uh, Tanya this huge, huge, like, uh, argument this morning when we were walking the dog. Mm. And there's just a lot of influencers now, either on TikTok or on YouTube, who do, and I'm doing air quotes, reviews, right? Yeah. Right, where basically they figured out two things. They, they figured out that either by loving something or by hating something, uh, they get a lot of views, or by creating really uh, clickbaity uh, headlines. Uh, and so, at least with us, we have you know an editorial team, and we try to be fair. So, like when I do a TikTok video, here are the top five things I love about something. Here are the top five things I hate about something. Mm -hmm. But most influencers don't do that, right? Most the thing, I, especially on TikTok now, that's happening is you know a lot of people have asked. There used to be a thing on YouTube where people would street race, and it would be in Mexico, right? <laughs> that was the whole thing for a while. Street yeah. racing in Mexico. Really? Now it's become hey, a lot of people ask me what I should get as my first car. Well, this is a great car. That's that's like the the go to now way of, and the problem with TikTok is, I think we had 10 million views on our TikTok channel uh, last month, right? Mm -hmm. Guess how much money we made? Uh, 150 bucks. Close, 200. 200 bucks. So, so the problem is, you know, even with 10 million views, you're not going to make a lot of money. No. So, so then how do you support your TikTok business or your TikTok wannabe business? You have to get 150 million views a day or something crazy like or, that. Or, or you get, go after sponsors. And That's and you what have, a lot of people do. And you have to be what I would call brand friendly, right? So, hey guys, a lot of people ask me, what's the best new vehicle to get for your family? Trust me on this Fiat. It, yeah, I, well, it wouldn't even be a Fiat. You know, <laughs> you know, this is the best vehicle out there, or you know what I mean? And then, yeah. then basically what you're doing is you're creating either a fertile field for paid promotion or you're doing a paid promotion. And that's, as a journalist, that's really frustrating. And it's super frustrating because, Nathan, if you don't like something on YouTube, you know, you know what you are? Hmm. You're butthurt. Yeah. You're not, it's not a thought. You're a hater. Or you're a hater or you're butthurt, you, yeah. you, you, you know, because you, you can't just be like, hey, this isn't great and here's why I don't think it's great. Because the fans who've already bought one or love one are going to go up against you no matter what you do. And we're used to that. And, you know, honestly, that's, that's fine. That's part of the whole deal with YouTube. I don't even care about that part. The part that gets me is that people put each other down for liking something. If you love the 1986 Ford F-150, despite whatever issues it may have, great. You found love for it. Other people throw hate on you because you love it. Those are the people that really annoy me. It's, it's, not, it's not right. You, you have a reason, an emotional connection to something, and people tear you down for it. That's something that I hate. I don't care about the rest of that, to be honest with you. Oh, and one other thing is that, yes, you may be curious. Yeah, we do actually do sponsorship as well. But what we do is we are completely transparent about it. We say this person sponsored us or that person sponsored us. This is what they're doing for us. We're still going to review this vehicle or whatever. That's how we work. It's, it's a little different. All right, let's go back to the auction. Auction time. Auction time. Uh, it's about to close. Actually, the uh, Jeep, I guess, did not sell. It's gone off the site. Oh, okay. Uh, so, unfortunately, the uh, Reserve Met uh, 2001 GMC Sierra 2500 HD is still at 5000 and that will sell. So, congratulations yeah. to Andre's neighbor. Uh, good work. You, got, you, you sold. And whoever bought it, congratulations. It looks like a super clean truck. Yeah, Andre said it was really clean. Yeah, and then, of course, this week we'll have the uh, 1997 GMC Sierra K. 1500 Z71 SLE 4x4. That's a yes. big one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we're, we're not exactly tearing the uh, walls down with these auctions, but, you know, we are slowly building up, uh, I hope, uh, interesting and fun uh, auction website. And if you have something that you want to sell, I know it's a weird time right now. Used car prices and truck prices are through the roof. We would love to try to sell it for you. Yep, it's, it's a bit of a seller's market right now, so you got a something. Big, holy cow. It's, it's a huge seller's market, to be honest with you. I know. I, I, I keep hearing all these stories, Nathan, from people who have taken uh, like a one-year-old vehicle to the dealer, and they've gotten more, more mo money, money for it. <laughs> than they paid for it. Well, we have an How article on that? that, too, don't we? Yeah. Um, yeah, Zach, didn't you produce an article on that? Yep, so go check it out on tflcar.com. It's worth seeing.
So uh, here's a good question. Let go of my ego says, what's the difference between a paid promotion on TikTok and getting a $30,000 upgrade defender when your first two are lemons? Mm, that's a really good question. Go for it, Roman. <laughs> of course, I will be happy. Go for it. First no. of all, uh, I think the biggest difference is it wasn't a $30,000 upgrade. No. No. Uh, so I think you're uh, being a little exaggerating there. It might have been like a $15,000 upgrade. That's fair. Uh, but... I think the most important part is we are actually, like you said, transparent about it. You know, like, dude, you know, uh, you know where we stand, you know what happened, and we're completely open about it. What, we could have hidden the fact that, you know, we had the first one break down, the second one had a major issue over the dealership trying to install something. We could have hidden that, but we wanted you guys to know exactly what we were going through. So the difference is we're letting you guys know exactly what we're going through. We're being fully transparent, unless you don't want us to be, and then we could just suddenly magically appear oh it's been suddenly fixed don't worry about the new color and the new wheels and, and the new, hey yeah. what's a great new four four by four that you should buy <laughs> and this is the best four by four ever and we've actually taken it off road and we've really punished it and you can see the results because we've actually done several videos including moab and tommy also took it on a long trip so those are some great videos out there honestly speaking it's done really well it took three times to get there and we're being honest about it yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, let me read some more comments before we wrap this up. Uh, Luke says, purchased my 2019 F250 6.74 by 4 at the start of COVID for a large discount. Mm. Standard profit, 17 k if I sell now. Should See, I and that's the thing. So the question you have to ask yourself is, if I'm going to profit now, should I wait? That's and we'll what he's go up? Yeah, finish. and that's, that's, we honestly don't know. What we do know is that when the chip shortage starts to wrap up, and once they ramp up their production of chips and everything else, ramp up production of vehicles, the used car market should drop considerably. So, so he, I got, I've got some inside information, but let me finish the question. Yeah, please. And I'll give you the inside information. So should I buy another F-250 in 2020 when the market normalizes mm -hmm. if I can manage my, uh, my beater? So uh, here's what I've, I've heard from you know, people pretty high up in these companies, that the chip shortage is resolving itself as we speak. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of at the bottom of that trough right now. Right. So you know, a quarter from now or half a year from now, let's say you know, by Christmas time, you know, we should be at a point where there's as many chips as, as, as are needed. Mm -hmm. The problem there is a greater one, right? And here's the issue. And I've, I've, I've talked to a bunch of dealers about this, trying to kind of figure out the issue, right? So let's say that you're a typical dealer and you keep 100 cars on your lot. Right. And you sell 100 cars. Mm -hmm. You still have this like backlog or a lot of 100 uh, vehicles that are there. Right now they sold that down to zero. So not only do you have to meet the existing demand, but then you also have to backfill that 100 vehicles so that you have... 200, 300 possibly vehicles right. that you eventually right. have so, to move. So, so even if you resolve the chip, you know, let's say the chip issue is resolved today, it's still going to take at least two quarters before you start backfilling that. So, so we're still looking at... You it's know, a bottleneck. Yeah, so we're still looking at... But then I think what's going to happen, and this is my personal opinion, once again, I could be wrong, I'm, I'm not an... You know, I'm not an economist, but uh, I think it's going to become like a toilet paper issue because yeah. you know there's this hoarding that that that, that like it's like, it's just a human nature, right? When, yeah. when when there's not enough of something, going to grab as much as I can. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and now with the toilet paper, uh, the manufacturers are complaining that they actually can't sell enough of it, right? That there's too much toilet paper. Yeah, they have a backlog because everybody grabbed it and then everything shorted, so they expanded their production. And now nobody really wants it. But and the, there is a good thing about that: toilet paper prices have dropped. So I, I, it's an unusual comparison, but it's actually quite true. I think that once the chips catch up and once they manage to get production going, eventually it's going to spread, and used car prices are going to drop. The other problem, of course, is and of course toilet paper and, and trucks are very different, right? One's a very inexpensive commodity ones a very expensive purchase so but still that, that, but that, 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 that same kind of mentality but that, exactly it's my point yeah yeah it works now uh, you know what does that mean the, the problem of course you get into is like that real estate problem like you can sell high but then you got to buy high yep so you could sell high but then you know you got to go buy if you can if you can live with the beater for six months then you might get off with some extra cabbage but that's the problem there's no guarantee to this personally speaking uh, I, I would err on the side of caution. Which means just hold on to it? Yeah. You would just hold on to it. Just be happy that you just have be it. Happy you have it. Drive, by the neighborhood, <laughs> drive by the neighborhood dealership and you'd be like, 
Hey. I'm rolling in the dough. <laughs> I'm rolling in the new car. All right. Well, uh, let me read one more comment before we uh, wrap this up. Uh, so uh, Smith Jones says, TFL should continue to work with Pennzoil or Firestone or other companies in this sphere, but not directly with vehicle manufacturers. I've appreciated TFL's integrity. Thank you very much. It's getting, we appreciate that. We, we've kind of messed with that a little bit. It's getting harder and harder to do what we're doing uh, just because, um, you know, um, everybody is now... Uh, kind of going to the highest bidder. It mm. really is true. It's true. And it's not, you know, it's not just, you know, the major publications. The problem, quite honestly, is that the business model has pretty much evaporated. So at one point in time, when you were a buff book, right, you were a car and driver, motor trend, uh, or any of the buff books, you could get $50,000 a page for advertising. Sure. Now that is completely gone. So mm -hmm. they're scrambling to make money to stay afloat. And so their standards have changed I would say yeah and, and I feel really bad because have you seen the recent like I just got a car and driver have you seen it's like it's like it's, it's tiny a, it's it's a pamphlet yeah it's it's a, it's, it's, it's remarkable and it's not just car and drive there are a lot of other ones that have and, done and that. once upon the, and, and we lose as consumers right because once upon a time the thinking for a lot of automotive journalists was to hold the manufacturers feet to the fire so if the manufacturer said the zero to 60 time for pick the vehicle is this then the magazines would independently test that uh, and you would know whether that was true or not. But now all that infrastructure is kind of crumbling. Uh, and it's not all gone yet. You know, it's funny. Uh, Tommy made uh, made a good point the other day. You know, we, we, we take a lot of hate for some of the things we do uh, because we try to be, you know, open and we try not to, you know, fill our, fill, fill our coffers with advertising revenue because, you know, all advertising at some point kind of, uh, does sway your opinion. Yeah, of course it right? does. So we really try to, to, to be as neutral and as honest as possible, uh, but but we get a lot of, like, like the, once upon a time when I started this, you could do, here's the thing, you could do a video, and this is how I was taught when I went to graduate school, right? Mm. Here's the things I hate about the car, and here's the things I love about the car. Uh, and now you can't do that video anymore, because what will happen is you will anger the fanboys because you show them the hate. Right. And you will, uh, uh, and then if you show them, if you, if you do, if you do just love, then you will anger the people. You will anger the people who go online because they want to see hate. So that you can't be objective anymore, right? It's two camps. It, you either have to love it or you have to hate it. And if you try to actually be kind of in the middle, then you get hate from both sides. You know what? I can handle the hate because we're still being we're showing our integrity and we're still capable of doing that with a non-biased opinion. Even my favorite vehicles, I love and hate. So I mean, I mean that's how people are, right? There's right. always something about something, you know, that you love. I mean, you guys know I love power wagons, but there are a lot of things I dislike about it. So yeah, well, 12 MPG, <laughs> that too. <laughs> and in the future, we will cover that as well. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us for this live show, for taking half hour out of your day, uh, and join us again next week. And next week we'll be back on Monday. Yep. Uh, uh, for another uh, TFL bids live show. Uh, thank you to Nathan, thank you to Zach for uh, you know working the cameras uh, and see you guys next time. Ciao. Cheers guys. We'll see you later.